Well, we did have a great time this afternoon, and if you were here, thank you so much for coming. Uh, Vivacity is a group that's been put together to go out and encourage, uh, win the lost, number one, but encourage the saints, number two. And I have found through my dad's love for music and through my own witness as I've traveled and, and take music on as uh, the, way, the vehicle, if you will, to tell people about the Lord, that music is very powerful, and it turns heads, and it makes people look. And so if you're, um, uh, you know, if you've, if you've got something on your mind and you're a songwriter or uh, a poet, you're, you know, you're going to write about it. It's going to come out. And so uh, I think the group Vivacity is a great group and has lots of potential. And so McKenna is now going to sing a song that's very dear to our hearts. And uh, it just talks about how, you know, well, I'll let McKenna really uh, explain it, but how God can take something that's broken and shattered and turn it into something beautiful. And so um, this is my daughter, McKenna. She's the lead singer of this band. And then, of course, we got Adler on the drums. He's going to play uh, his drums, but he's going to play them easy to, for tonight. And then we've got uh, Brandon uh, on the acoustic guitar, and Brandon's family is here tonight as well. And so we're going to do our best to honor the Lord. McKenna, say a few words about this song to get us started. My mom wrote this song a long, long time ago, and it talks about how um, it took her total brokenness for her to understand what God's plan was for her. So if you listen to the lyrics, um, they really do tell a story. I'm standing broken at his feet again and giving all the pieces of my shattered life to him but when this world it breaks me down till i can't recognize the pieces left just lying there at his feet i lay my life i'm staying in the master's hands, broken into pieces to form his final plan. A work of art so beautiful, yet it's hard to comprehend that it took my total brokenness for me to understand that it's my stained life and his design a masterpiece in his hands he takes each piece and places it within a living picture, my life, a tribute unto him. A rainbow of the hardest times, the hillway seems so dim. Each corner led me to the next, making me worthy of him. I'm staying less in the master's hand. Broken into pieces to form his final plan. Oh, a work of art so beautiful, yet it's hard to comprehend that it took my total brokenness for me to understand that it's my stained life and his design, a masterpiece. I'm a masterpiece. 
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free, my shame is undone. Your presence, the Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest to loves where my heart becomes free my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come fly Well, my McKenna, come back up here. If you would, I want you to stand uh, with me. We're going to sing just a small medley I think you'll be familiar with. This is to get our hearts and minds ready for communion.
very serious time. All right. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? This hour are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? All right now. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments Spotless are they white as snow, oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. All right, listen to this good question. It goes like this. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, oh, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory? There's wonderful power in the blood. All right now. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And one more question before we go into our communion time. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All right now. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other power I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Steve. All right. Well, I'm going to sing a song for you, and the band's going to stay up here. They don't know this song, but uh, I don't get a whole lot of chances to sing this song, so I thought I'd go ahead and do it. It goes like this. Like a foolish dreamer trying to build a highway to the sky, all my hopes would come tumbling down. Never knew just why. Until the day when you pulled away the clouds that hung like curtains on my eyes, I was lost. All these wasted years, I thought I was so wise. And then he took me by surprise Like waking up from the longest dream How real it seemed Until your love broke through I've been lost in a fantasy That blinded me until your love broke through All my life I've been searching For that crazy missing part With one touch You just roll away The stone that held my heart And now I see that the answer was as easy As your word revealed to me And I am sure I could never doubt your gentle touch again. It's like the power of the wind, like waking up from the longest dream. How real it seemed until your love broke through. I've been lost in a. 
fantasy that blinded me until your love grew through life waking up from the longest dream how real it seemed until your love broke through and I've been lost in a fantasy that blinded me until your love broke through until your Kenna, come on back up here. Babacity. Yeah, they're going to lead us in some praise and worship songs. Now, Babacity's been busy. I tell you, they've been out all summer singing. We, uh, we sang in uh, uh, several different churches, and, uh, and so they are uh, very busy. And uh, so keep them in mind, insight in mind, when you go through your prayers that these kids can travel with, with little um, with no harm done to them. Amen? When your kids are on the road, you, you start thinking about all the things that you've encountered on the road, and you get nervous. That's right. And so, uh, uh, anyway, they're going to be singing a few praise and worship songs, songs you may not be familiar with, uh, but you might be as well. So, uh, just uh, try to, you know, give the Lord praise in these songs. I know you're going to enjoy them, and I'll, I'll have them take over. Our banner 
Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? This is all failing love. Then you would take my place. Then you would bear my cross. So you lay down your life. Then I would be set free. Oh, oh Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings the chaos back into order? Makes the orphan a son and daughter. The king of glory, the king of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice. Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The king of glory, the king above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. Then you would take my place. Then you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. Then I would be set free. Oh. oh. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb. We have one more song. I can't 
Your grace abounds in deepest borders. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Your fear my fail and fear surrounds me. You've never failed and you will start now. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans are Thank you, McKenna. We're going to have them come up here in just a moment. And, uh, you know, being the sound guy and uh, the uh, one of the guys who are on the program, it's hard. You have a lot of things that happen. Like I lost my Bible trying to get my, uh, trying to get what I was going to do the, uh, tonight in here. And uh, so then my, my daughter runs out to the van. She looks for, while well, between singing, she looks for the Bible. It's not there. I have messed up. I sent her on the wild goose chase. So she comes back. She says, I don't see it, Dad. And I said, well, maybe it's in the room where we met. So and the next time she could, she went over there. I don't know if you've seen her walking around. I walked around a little bit at the beginning of the service trying to find my Bible. And uh, so I did end up finding it. McKenna found it, actually. She says around the corner. And uh, so uh, so that that worked out, and it's right behind me right here. And then while I'm up here, I find out that I've got my shoe untied down here. Uh, and it's kind of annoying knowing that my shoe's untied and trying to keep my uh, 
act together up here. <laughs> Everything's great. So uh, I'm thinking, should I bend down and tie my shoe in front of everybody? Or should I just pretend like I don't notice and have you think about it the whole time? So I'm going to say that I've been down and I tie my shoe so that it's not awkward. All right? Hang on just a moment. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. It's great what you pick up uh, when you travel. You meet lots of different people. You stay in a lot of different homes. And you realize along the way that everybody's different. Everybody's different. Some are very normal. Some are very odd people. Some houses are very normal. Some houses are very odd. And then I got to thinking, you know, what's normal? Well, in my house, uh, well, when I was a kid, we had an open door policy. People could walk in and out. There were people in my house I didn't know at times. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, who are you? Well, I'm so-and-so. Your dad brought me over, you know. And I guess I'm having Thanksgiving with you. Oh, okay. Well, great. Yeah, wonderful. Not, I mean, that might happen in my house, but it would not surprise me. It was normal, all right? But like, say, in my wife's house, when she was a kid, they never had anybody come out from outside in the house. That hardly ever happened. That would have been very odd. And I'm thinking, what would be odd? Well, I lived in a house where people were around all the time. We were in front of people all the time. And it's not odd to me to stand right here in front of you right now, except for if my shoe's untied. That's a little odd. So, uh, but it's pretty normal to me. But to some of you, you may have never been up in front of people. That would be odd to you. It may not be a good odd. It may not feel good to you. But for some people, like McKenna and Adler and Brandon, it's not odd at all. Matter of fact, it seems normal, right? So here what I'm thinking is, when I think of people and I stay in their houses and I say, that person is odd, or that house is odd, I'm thinking maybe they're not odd, maybe I'm odd. Maybe I'm the different one. Have you ever thought that? All right? Well, so uh, that's what I'm thinking. And then here, I learned that growing up. I learned that in the last few uh, months, that uh, I might be the odd duck. And I realize that. And uh, so, but I have to be me. I have to go out into my world of influence and do what I do and do what I do the best. And all my talents need to be devoted to the Lord. And if you do that, God says he'll bless you in your endeavors. Amen? Amen. I love that. I love to be on the road. And I love to travel. Even when I make mistakes, even when I make mistakes in front of people. Uh, things don't go well. They still have compassion on me because I'm in God's work. Amen? <laughs> That's right. And that feels pretty good too. I found out that you are responsible for what you know. Did you know that? You're responsible for what you know as a Christian. You really are. If you know it and you don't do it, then shame on you. You're responsible for what you know. And that scared me so much when I was first thinking about it. Well, I'm not going to learn anymore then. <laughs> I'll just stop right here. But that doesn't work because here you are. And this is the bad news. <laughs> You're responsible for what you don't know. Now, isn't that interesting? You're responsible for what you know. You're responsible for what you don't know. Well, don't think about it too hard. Because God has already instilled you, in you a sense of wrong or right. You have it when you're born. You grow up with it. You know if you go uh, and you do what your folks tell you not to do, why you could be doing the wrong thing. You have a sense of maybe I shouldn't do this. It's already instilled in you. With feelings comes guidance. God put Anger in your life, he put uh, sadness in your life, and he put uh, happy times in your life too. 
Those are all good feelings. He also gave you senses. You know, you don't get too close to heat. Your body tells you not to do it. It warns you before you get there. And if you do stick your hand in a fire, you're already in agony. You know, so you have a sense of what to stay out of as well. I always told my kids, your first impression is probably the right one. Especially for McKenna, the boys you know, you say, your first impression is probably your right one. So pretty much trust in that. You're responsible for what you know, and you're responsible for what you don't know. And the great thing is that for the Christian, you can use the Bible as guidance. You know, you can use your feelings as guidance. You can use your impressions to guide you, though here you will make mistakes. God warns you that you will. So, the world changes on a daily basis, but God's word never does, right? So, we live our lives following the Lord. And no matter if you're the normal one or you're the odd one, people will listen to you and they'll give you a sense of forgiveness even if you mess up in whatever you're doing, be it singing be it being a mechanic, be it uh, working on websites, whatever you do in your life that's your talent and you're using that for the Lord, God will bless it, I promise you. When I was a kid, I, when my kids were kids, when McKenna, let's say, was a kid, and to me she still is, she's 16 years old, she's still a kid, but she's starting to act like an adult. Well, we did an experiment. My, uh, I gave McKenna a guitar, and, uh, and I said, McKenna, music's very powerful. You don't even know how to play this, but I bet you, and I'm not sure what, how we got in the conversation, but I told her if she took this guitar and went and sat on the curb, that it wouldn't be long, and she'd be surrounded by kids, even though she didn't know how to play it. So she went out, sat on the curb with this guitar, it wasn't long, one kid, then two, then three. Right? Do you remember that? You don't remember? She did a good job. She pretended to play. And she did a good job doing that. And so she did draw a bit of a crowd with that guitar. And, uh, and so music is very powerful, even by itself. But I tell you what, you attach the good news with it. You attach the gospel with it. And I'm a person, you've got a tool right there for winning the lost. An open door, if you will. So, it might be, and this is the interesting thing about today, and I was sitting here thinking during the concert earlier, they're doing a really good job. They're doing normal, but I'm thinking to the crowd, and we did have youth here, but we had a lot of dogs here too. This might be off, and I'll tell you why. It's loud. There's a lot of noise going on. That in this room is probably off. But anywhere else this band sings, it's normal. So I'm thinking, I hope the oddness doesn't overcome what the message is. And then I asked Adler and Brandon, I said, Adler and Brandon, I want you guys to be able to sing for the service, but I want you to be able to turn it down. Can you do it? Adler's like, I can do it. Brandon's like, I can do it. They came out here, and they did do it, didn't they? They did a great job. Very good, guys, by the way. All right? And so they took the odd out of the situation and became normal. I like that. You've got to know your crowd. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Tonight we've shared a bit of our lives together, and we've done it in the right way. I love to say that because we're here for the same reason that's to give the Lord praise. One of my favorite verses in the Bible goes like this, and you'll have to think about all the things I said about being responsible for what you don't know and know, about being normal or odd, and the power of your talent, and couple it with these verses out of Matthew, and it says this. I love these words. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp 
and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and uh, praise your heavenly Father for it. And the end, I love. In the same way, let your light shine before men and they may see your good deeds and praise the Heavenly Father for it. Amen? Amen. That right there is great advice. That's wonderful advice. You're responsible for what you don't know. Now I want you to go just a little further and look at your neighbor, not the one next to you. You know that person's responsible for what they do know. But there are people that live around you. This is important because this is why we meet here every day. They're responsible for what they don't know. And I'm talking about the guy who lives near you, next to you, under you, over you, if you live in an apartment. People you go to school with, Adler, your huge uh, school that you go to, right? There are people around that don't know the good news. And they're responsible for it anyway. So, now the Christian is responsible for what they know. They need to be going out and telling the good news. Amen? Amen. And if you do that every day, and this is the one thing I, I learned about my dad. My dad lived a Christian life, and he did his work being a Christian, spreading the gospel. And it didn't matter if he was singing or not singing. He could have been at Walmart, and he was still spreading the gospel on a daily basis. And I know a lot of you do that. I know Kevin does that because I, I see his actions. You know, he's always giving the Lord praise. If he sees a good view, he's all of a sudden giving the Lord praise, always streaming advice on the uh, Internet and Scripture. And uh, that's living the life of a Christian. And uh, so our neighbors were responsible I had a neighbor, and uh, he had this odd green car. Probably not odd to him, normal. I'm just kidding. But it was an interesting car, and I would see that car. And one day, he was sitting out there, and I walked over to his car, and I said, this is quite a car. And he said, I said, how long have you had this? And he says, oh, he says, I've been working on this since I was in high school. And he said, let me show you my first part I put on this car. I opened the hood, and he got in there. It was green. Had green paint all over the firewalls, and there's this one part down below. He said, this was the original part I bought for this engine, the one I started with. And it caused such a uh, commotion with my friends, uh, just me being able to put that part on and buy it. And I just started building this car, and here I am today. And I said, that's fantastic, man. He, I said, where do you work at? He says, I work at Walmart. And I said, what do you do at Walmart? He says, I catch thieves. <laughs> I said, you do? And he goes, yeah. He says, I, I dress like I do. I go shopping at Walmart, and I just keep an eye on people. And when I see somebody that's looking a little shifty, maybe looking over their shoulder like that, he says, I know to follow them. And then when I see them steal something, I follow them until they get to the exit. And then I pounce. I go get them. I do my job. I was like, wow, that's really interesting. So you're kind of like a cop. He says, yeah, with no training. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I just tell them, I stop them at the door. I said, that's interesting. All right. So the next time I see this guy, I walk out. I see him. He's in the car. And uh, he gets out, but he looks distraught. He walks in the house. He comes back out. And his girlfriend, I'm thinking, I'm not real sure. I think it's his, my his wife, but I think it's his girlfriend. She's upset. She jumps in the car, and he tries to stop her. He's leaning in the car window. He's telling her, please, please don't go. We'll work it out. Don't, don't do this. Don't do this. I could see he was very upset. I tried not to pay, you know, like too much attention. And so I just kind of walked to my car, and I got in, and she took off and went down the road, and I saw him go in the house. I was like, oh. So I did. I said a prayer for, for him at that point. When I came back, 
That evening, he was on his front porch, and he had his head down, and you could see he was struggling. Oh, my goodness, he was struggling. Now, I've never met him but once. We talked about his car. And uh, so I walked over there, and I didn't say anything. And I could tell what was going on. And I, all I said was, I walked up to him. He was looking at his shoes. You could see the tears dropping. I could see that he had lost his girlfriend or his wife. And all I said was, hey, man, I want you to know that your neighbor praying for you. I saw what happened this morning. I just, I'm praying for you. And he didn't say anything. All he did was take his hand off his knee. He reached over and touched me on the leg. Put his hand up. And I walked away. I left. Weeks later, I see him again. He got his car back, I can tell you that. <laughs> his car's sitting out there. And he's there, and I walk out, and I said, hey, man, how are you? He goes, yeah, man, I'm doing better. I'm doing so much better. And he says, well, I just want you to know that the day you walked over to me and said those words to me, he says, I was not in a good position. I was not feeling well. And he says, I felt so alone. He says, but just knowing that somebody, I mean, somebody cared. He said, I felt like if I had to, I could walk over to your house and just knock on the door if I needed help. And uh, he says, and that's what got me through the next few weeks. I want you to know that. I said, really? Well, that's great because I have been praying for you. I'm not lying. He says, I know. And, uh, and then we pretty much left it at that. He ended up moving, by the way. He's not there anymore. That's the way apartments are. But I want you to know that, uh, you know, I didn't say a whole lot, but and I said a lot more to others and never made a dent in their faith. I just kept on being what they are, struggling or not struggling, really. I don't know. Well, the end of our program leads us to say this, is that you're responsible for what you have. And you're responsible for what you don't know. And you're responsible for your neighbor who may or may not know it. My dad used to say, they don't know any better. They don't know any better. And if you tell them, with love and compassion in your heart, you're not their judge, but you care about them, then they will at least be accountable for what they know, right? At least you give them something to think about. Uh, an option, if you will, so that when they go through tough times, they can at least before they understand God's word, can turn to you, and you'll be available to show them that very thing. Amen? Amen. Lead them to Christian music. Oh, my goodness. That's wonderful, powerful. Uh, for our daily, uh, people listen to music all day long. I want you to stand, if you will. We're going to have McKenna come up. Vivacity is going to be leading us in a, uh, in a song. It'll be the last song that they sang for us. And... Um, We'll just have you repeat that song again. The last song you sang. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and we'll, what we'll do is while they're singing, I just want you to, uh, I think I'm pretty much speaking to the choir. Amen. Nah. We've enjoyed our time here. And, uh, and we uh, love being here. And we want to come back again, of course. So McKenna will be singing. And, uh, and we and you together, what we'll do during this song is we'll be thinking about how in our lives we can go out into our world of influence and make a difference and with our talents, with our personality, and go where it might be odd for us. But just remember, even though it's odd for you, it might be pretty normal to them to have you around. So don't think uh, that you can't go into places where you haven't been already. All right, McKenna, sing this song.
You draw me out upon the waters Like bated notes Where feet may fail And if I find you in the mystery An ocean state My faith will stand Oceans arise, my Savior rests to your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. We feed my fan, fierce surrounds me. You've never failed, and you will start now. And I And you 